We're in the synagogue here. In Hello. Hello. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Philadelphia. That's very nice. Is that your first time in Israel? Uh, no. Been here three times. I'm sure you like it. Yes, enjoying it very much. And what is the purpose of your visit now in Israel? Take lots of pictures and video to use for teaching. That's very nice. What do you teach? Uh, Bible courses on the internet. That's very beautiful. Do you know what I'm writing here? No. I'm writing the Torah. Do you know what's the Torah? Yes. The first five books from the Bible. But what's beautiful about it is that its tradition goes back to 3,500 years that we're writing it in parchment with a quill. And in the Torah, there are over 300,000 letters. And every letter is important. If one letter is missing, you cannot use the Torah at a synagogue. And you know the reason. No. The reason is, since every letter is presenting one person. Therefore, the Torah's message is to unite all the people together under God with love and peace. And since you're yourself teaching Torah, I would like to give you a small gift. Here, please come inside. Come to this side. Well, in the Torah, there is a tradition that if you would like to have a blessing, you can write it in a small piece of parchment where you write the Torah. So I would like to know what kind of a blessing you would like to have for teaching so many people the Torah. Um, I guess uh, that others may learn. You know that if you worry about other people, therefore God will bless you for all the things you did not pronounce for yourself. And since your desire in your heart is to bring more wisdom of God to other people, that is absolutely a marvelous, beautiful thing. Wait one second. What text are you writing now? I'm writing the Torah. Are you in the same group? Yes. Which yes. Part? Which what part of the Torah? Part? The end of numbers. Okay. Ah, okay. Must say, did any one of you have seen the Torah before? Yes. <laughs> Where have you seen the Torah? I teach Hebrew Bible. That's very beautiful. So all of you are teaching Torah over here. Mm. Uh, no. no, not every. Just, not every. Just oh. from, I, I go to a. I belong to a messianic congregation that has a Torah. That's very beautiful. What is your name? Uh, Steve. Steve, I uh, will write for you the blessing, and then I will explain your friends at what I'm doing. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. This is called a Nibra Kamea. It's parchment. It's not a paper. You can roll it or put it inside your wallet. Just make sure that water won't touch it. And this is to hear good news from you. Now, hopefully, your beautiful message will come throughout the whole world. Thank you. It's explaining that I'm writing over here the Torah. And in the Torah, the Torah is the first five books from the Bible. And in the Torah, there are over 300,000 letters. And every letter is important. If one letter is missing, you cannot use the Torah at a synagogue. And the reason is, since every letter is presenting one person, therefore the Torah's message is to unite all the people together under God, love, and peace. Tower here. We walk along.
part of the tower. Another. Masada here. As well. Nor is the platform built on top of the ramp in order to let the tower go up. Is there any evidence of it? And Josephus tells us that they tiled the, the ramp for the wooden for the tower. Where is our tiling? It's missing. Their new revolutionary suggestion is that everything here is valid except for the last little bit. At the very end, when the Jews realized it's all going to happen, they decided to commit suicide before the Romans actually fought against the wall. So by the time the Romans reached a certain height, there was no resistance, not, not even a sound. Okay? They just climbed up to the top and, and broke through this area and saw everyone dead. But without, uh, without the, the details as Josephus tells us. Why then did Josephus change it? Again, maybe to make it more dramatic. But that's another very interesting insight that they present. I must argue that some disagree. They say the wood that was burnt here was later cleared. Re if there was anything valuable, the monks later reused them. And there's also a section in this corner where Yadin did find a, a wooden beam. Okay? I'm presenting all the evidence, the pros and cons of the different alternatives, the different ways to reconstruct the real events here. Why, why, why cook some wood here? This says this is the Byzantine Western Gate. of the 19th century because someone did report the whole thing having a mosaic floor and yet there's none of it left today. But in this room, Yadin still found the mosaic floor well and intact. Okay? Over there, it's got subjects. You see a cluster of grapes. The style is not Herodian. All of this is post-Herodian, post-rebel. This is 5th century activity of Christian monks. With the advent of Christianity, the Judean desert became a very popular destination for monks arguing, here you're going in the footsteps of Jesus. Because indeed, after his baptism, it says he went into 40 days and nights into the desert, and the Judean desert is close to the Jordan River. And over 50 monasteries in Poland were created in the Judean desert in the Byzantine times. At some point, Sources tell us of monks dwelling in the monastery in Malatak, so it's called Malatak. Malatak being Masada, that's the common assumption. They dwelt among the ruins, they found the remains. Finally, they did a for us. And this is the last chapter of Masada. One more thing I want to show you before we start to raise back is the Western Palace of Masada. As it turns out, Eric not only had the Norman complex, he added a number. He had another complex against the western side. Why? One, yeah, one yeah, nice palace a lot is not enough? Yeah. Um, well, you never have well, you enough. Know. Well, this is the western <laughs> palace here. Of Herod the Great. Thank you. 
that the northern palace has besides protection is breeze and shade in the lower levels in the mid of the day the upper terrace is more shade over the room it's closed i know stick your head in there's a last use of this palace was by rebel we found a lot of rebel remains Here's the Western Palace here. Here you've got two pillars. In between the pilasters, entering a room that was plastered. The plastering imitated marble staff. You turn left and again you have two pillars in between pilasters. This element repeats itself again and again in Herod's palaces in elsewhere. It's a, it's a certain element called distilos, distilos in antis. And you will see it when we get to Jerusalem and elsewhere. Uh, it's an interesting element that repeats itself. This, we believe, led to the throne marks that, that flow. On the other hand, what led into the whole complex has the biggest and nicest mosaic floor ever found from the royal times, even than just a third of it. Is preserved. And take a look there before the upper group takes that spot. In the band? Yes. These are this definitely the band the is rebel right editions. The rebel decided to leave on the floor to show you okay. the whole area was reused by the rebel. Ah, made this building as a freestanding structure. Okay, thinking the site itself is safe enough, I'll just make a typical manor house of, uh, of rooms around the a courtyard. As he gains wealth and paranoia, he argues for something more safe and more extravagant. And he makes something much more sophisticated against the northern edge, including the bathhouse. This is a rather simple technology. This is the Greek tradition. The northern complex has the Roman technology which is imported for the first time in these days. Okay? Uh, relative chronology, I, I believe, explains it. But it's not that I know. The, uh, the artifacts here are not enough uh, to tell you know, which decade every sequence was built. You can tell relative sequence. You can see how it was built in stages. But not enough to tell all. It's exactly what I argue. Are these Crusades find a more delicate than those northern palace? They're a lot more complex, a lot <clears throat> more ornate. So why did he simplify there? So we need to do a fair It was a matter of things. It seemed more appropriate for the Sekhila and he's also far more Wow, it's a big pool. Yeah, it is. 
Some think this is a, a Qumran settlement part. Or uh, similar to the one at Qumran, where they ate Qumran uh, area here. But they came from Qumran and settled here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.